Bertie's rang about half an hour ago. I, he's going to send one of his clerks over tomorrow. I told him he wanted the audit finished by the end of the week. Sure. Thanks. You're very late. They'll be halfway through dinner by now. Where's the invite? There it is. Chrissy, be a love and tell Len to bring the car around the front. I've got to get this. There's not tons of night, you know. And see that he puts some decent gear on. Huh. Well, gentlemen, now that you've heard the facts and figures, I would ask you to scrutinise them at your leisure. Afterwards, copies of the itemised expenditure will be made available. And... Oh, uh, come in, won't you? We started without you. Sorry I'm late. Got held up. Uh, can you find somewhere to sit? Yes. <clears throat> uh, now, I, I'd like Mr. James Hadley to say something about the scheme uh, and tell you why he considers it to be worthy of your support. James? Well, gentlemen, Sir Edward has asked you here to dinner tonight because, quite frankly, you're all prosperous businessmen. <laughs> prosperous, Who said I? prosperous? Well, you may be able to fool the Inland Revenue, but you can't fool me. <laughs> now, we all know how difficult it is to make money and how easy it is to spend it. Well, all we're asking you to do tonight is to spend it. You'll be lucky. <laughs> you see, I think the town does need this art centre, and I don't mean by that a dark, stuffy museum full of old relics. I mean, they can always go to the Chamber of Commerce for that, can't they? Oh. No, I mean a bright, young place where the young people of the town can study the work of living artists. Modern painting, architecture, sculpture, listen to poetry and have lively discussions. Actually, I just think we ought to show them we're prepared to do something concrete in which to enrich their lives. Here, yeah, yeah. here. Well, Sir Edward has told you that Thorpe House can be bought and converted for just a little over £20,000. It's the perfect site, and I think we can do it. With your help and your enthusiasm, we could turn a dream into a reality. <coughs> Thank you, James. Well, I'm sure there are several of you who'd like to put a question to Mr Hadley or myself. Any questions? Well, I say put your proposals up to the council, Sir Edward. We've got enough problems on our hands without adding to them. The council is already overcommitted on essential spending, I'm afraid. They'd never wear it, not unless private capital is injected first. All the kids will do is have ruddy happenings, <laughs> pass round drugs and take their clothes off. Yeah, that's right, look at many other shows, lad. Yes, well, if that's, that's what they want, there are plenty of places in yeah, West Yeah, but there's no one on the committee who'd give it house room. It, 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 it's a ridiculous idea. I don't think it'll work at all. Gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, this is just a preliminary discussion. I should like to see... A committee coming out of tonight's uh, talk. There'll be a lot of problems, I know. Have you thought about forming a syndicate to purchase the freehold? Yes. The people who put money in at the beginning would form a committee and establish a trust fund. No, I won't go on about a trust. I'm talking about putting cash into a syndicate for public development. There's four, four acres of land going with that building. We're well, not here to make money, Mr. Waddington. Struck me as a very fair investment. Yes, well, I think we're just getting a little off the point, don't you? Sir Edward has asked for nominations to committee. Well, somebody must surely be prepared You've got to... time, Sir Edward. We haven't. Time's money, and I'm running out of both. Oh, well, perhaps it would be better if we talk about it informally among ourselves. Uh, well, yes. Good evening, Good night, gentlemen. gentlemen. Good evening. I can't understand them, James. Where's the local pride? Oh, I may have rushed ahead too quick. Caught them on the wrong foot. Uh, excuse me a minute. Yes. I'd say the idea didn't exactly grab them, Mr. Hadley. Sir Edward C. The name's Foster. Mark Foster. You want my advice? Mm. Leave the kids to live their own lives. They know what they want. And it's not an art. Uh, yes, well, I'm afraid I must disagree with you. You're out of touch, Hadley, and so's the old fellow. Uh, is this young man interested? Oh, you could say that. And drop in for a cup of coffee on the house sometime, see how the other half lives. Well, must get back and do a bit more grafting. Good night, Sir Edward. Mr. Hadley.
Oh, he's a rummin. What's he doing here? Well, I put him on the list because he's one of the ten richest men in town, but it appears that we didn't grab him. Eh? Ah, oh, it's just an expression. Oh, I see. I have to keep Susan up to date sometimes, you know. Susan? If she's my fiancée. You might say that I grabbed her. Oh, really? <laughs> well, you must introduce me sometime. Bring her to dinner. Yes, I'd like to. Oh, by the way, Charlotte's staying with me now. You knew, didn't you? No, no, I didn't. Yes, she's living here now since her mother... You knew, didn't you, in the summer? Yes, yes, I had heard. I'm awfully Oh, sorry. of course you wrote. How dreadful of me. Sorry. Yes, Lottie's given up her job in town to come home and look after her poor old father. Marjorie left her all her money, you know. You were quite a beau of Lottie's in the old days, I oh. think, remember? Yes. Yes, we were mad about each other at one time. <laughs> Mind you, that's a long time ago. It all fizzled out when I went to live in London. Is she, is she around now? Uh, not at the moment. Oh. She's been up in London the last couple of days, seeing about her investments. Yes, I expect her train will be late. Terrible night. Well, I hope it clears up. Susan's flying back tonight. She went up to do some shopping. I wonder if Charlotte might be interested in our venture. Oh, she might. She spends a lot of her time in Westdale. Doing what? Well, she doesn't tell me much about what she's doing. Don't think she sees many of her old friends in the countryside anymore. Nearly all of them married. <laughs> yes, they would be by now. So I wish she'd get herself a boyfriend. My father waits up for me. Let him. He worries about me all the time. What I'm doing, who I'm seeing. Nice house you've got. All that marble. I'm glad you were impressed. How did the meeting go off? Oh, I got there too late for the nosh, just in time for the speeches and a flipping waste of time there were. I felt quite sorry for your dad. In other words, nobody offered to put up any money. Not a sausage. Why did you go, Mark? I was invited. Keep out of that world. It isn't you any more than it's me. Now. You live in that world, though, don't you, darling? I was born in it. They don't live in it. Reside, if you like. I have a duty to my father. But I think you know where I want to be, don't you, Mark? You're a traitor to your class, Charlotte Sunday. I prefer to think of myself as a rebel. You're slumming. No, Mark. I'm living in a real world. That's right. Lady Chatterley. <laughs> Got in. Oof. How's the world? Spinning, or it could just be my head. Well, I'll give you my news very quietly, and I'll uh, silently steal away. Oh, that would be most considerate. What news? Well, it won't exactly stop the presses, I'm afraid, but I would be grateful if you'd slip it in somewhere. I'll do what I can. Sir Edward Sidney had a meeting at his house last night of local businessmen. Yeah, I heard something about it. The idea was to drum up some money for his new art centre. <laughs> How'd it go? It didn't. Total apathy. I think he's going to find it very difficult to get that thing off the ground at all. Well, you can relax. Because there's nothing for them to put their money into anymore. What do you mean? Sir Edward wanted to acquire Thorpe House, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. It's a perfect site. Yeah, it was. It's been sold. You're joking. Sir Edward had an option. No, he didn't, I'm afraid. Well, he talked about yeah, it. Yeah, talked about it. Anyway, it's been sold. Well, when did you find this out? Ten minutes ago. Well, who the hell has bought it? What's the name of the agency? Hobson Horton, but they well, refuse you... to divulge the name. Why not? They never do. Business ethics. Oh, somebody's moved down fast. Do you know that place has been empty for months without a peep of interest? It's a shame. It's a damn shame. I can't believe it. What is that fellow's name at the meeting? 
Tell something about a syndicate, property development. Horace Waddington, he owns a chain of supermarkets. That one in the high streets, his, I think. Uh. Jeff. Charlotte. How nice to see you. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Your father told me you were back. How are you, love? I didn't hear you come in last night. The train was held up somewhere. We just sat around and missed it up. Yes, if you'd been on the 8.30 plane, you might have met my fiancé, you know. Your fiancé? Oh, yes, of course, I heard you were engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. Susan something. That's right, Susan something Jackson. She works on the Gazette. And she's gorgeous. Well, I think so. James has come to tell me some bad news, I'm afraid. Oh? Yes, you know we had our eye on Thorpe House for the new art centre. Yes. It's been bought, right under our noses. Frightful blow. Can't you find somewhere else? Not easy. It was perfect for what we want, and the price was right. So what are you going to do? Find out who the hell's beaten us to it and try and get him to change his mind. I see. Well, James, if you'll excuse me, I've got some letters to write. Yes. yes. Uh, Charlotte, offer James some more coffee. Black or white, James? I can't remember. Black. It has been ten years. You haven't changed at all. You have. I know. You've lost weight. I needed to. You're more poised, more handsome. That marvellous bone structure. James, aren't you being sweet? Then you always were the most outrageous flatterer. No wonder half the girls in Yorkshire were in love with you. Including me. Mm. All that was a long time ago, I remember. Who do you love now, Charlotte? I don't know about love. But there is someone. Yes. Does it make you happy? Happy? Well, fulfilled, then. Perhaps. Anyone I know? I doubt it. James Hadley. Ah, Colin, how nice of you to call me back. Yes, it was about Thorpe House. Well, Hobson Horton told me that you handled old Colonel Wicker's estate. Look, Colin, I want you to do me a favour. Strictly off the record, I'd like you to tell me who exactly bought Thorpe House. Yes, of course I know. All right, I promise. Here, hang on. No, I'm just getting something to write with. Who did you say? Oh, that's all right. I don't need to write it down. I happen to know the gentleman. <laughs> Uh, no, it's not, I'm afraid. Well, yes, it's Walter's office, but he's not here at the moment. Uh, Miss Winkle, no, I don't think there is... She's been kidnapped. Who exactly am I speaking to? Miss Alice Ryder. Well, look, he's just... All right, then, who's Miss Winkle? A very lovely lady. With no morals. What have you been up to, Frank? Miss Winkle happens to be a cat. Her precious owner thinks we can find the creature for her. Have you got any real news for me, have you? Real estate news, you mean? Yes, I just wondered if you'd found out who bought Thorpe House. Well, I've had somebody check the estate agents. They're oh. simply not saying. Mm -hmm. I thought we'd run a piece on the mystery buyer. Yeah, well... If you get anything absolutely definite, you um, you might get in touch with me first. I'll it? do what I can. Frank Walters. Yes, Miss Riley, you told me. Yes, she didn't drink her milk on Wednesday. She walked out of the garden and she's a naughty little pussy. Can I have any 
secret here, Mr. Hadley. Yes, I'm sorry, I don't Mark think we... Mark Foster. Well, this, well, it's good for the trade. If that's your drink. Well, you did, you did say a coffee. Two coffees, love. Picked it up cheap in a film studio. Groovy, isn't it? Fancy a cake? No, thank you. Take a few. Thank you. So, you've come to see how the other half lives, eh? You did invite me. Oh, yes. Look, if you want money out of me for that art centre, you can forget it. I'm strictly for me, understand? Yes. I actually came for some information. Well, there's nothing I can tell you. Yes, I think there is, actually. About Thorpe House. Well, that's all ruined. Make a lousy art centre. What are you going to do with it, then? I think you'd better go, Mr. Hadley. We're asking you fifteen thousand pounds for it. Well, I don't know anything about it. Yes, I think you do. Look, Mister Hadley, I mind my own business. Why don't you do this here? Because it is my business. Oh yes. Yes, I've got an interest in the Gazette. Now the Gazette's business is news, so your news is the Gazette's business, which is why I've got an interest in you. Do you follow? Me? Well. Well, I was wondering what you were going to do with it. That's all. The I town is hardly big enough to have two places like this, is it? Yes, but it, it might be for me to live in. Me and my old mother. I don't think it's quite your style, do you, Mr. Foster? Oh, you don't know my style, Mr. Hadley. No? You know, I can almost feel sorry for people like you. Well, we all need sympathy, don't we? You got it all made. There's nothing left for people like you to do anymore. Me? I've only just started. I count that lucky. You, th you think I'm finished, do you? Not finished. But you don't need anything, do you? Big house, big car, big bank account. What's left for you at the end, apart from the money? No. You're not finished. Just slowly fossilizing. Well, I shall have to do something about it then, won't I? Like starting an art centre, you're backing a loser, Mr. Adler. Not if we both went into it together, no. You're thinking of Thorpe House, that's out. Yeah. Well, it was just a thought. Sorry, I can't be more helpful. Well, what are you going to print, then? Oh, we'll think of something. Make one statement that can't be proved. And I'll see. Thank you for your coffee. I don't need your money. Well, give it to some good cause, then. Mr. Hadley comes here asking for me. Throw him out. That blow? Yes. He knows about Thorpe House. Does he know what you're going to use it for? No, he doesn't. Do you always make a habit of inviting your guests at the last moment? Do you object? No. You know damn well I don't. Susan? Oh, she'll be here. I thought the idea was... It was for you to meet her, yes. Yes, it is. I just thought we'd talk over old times. It has been a long time. Welcome back to civilization. Westdale? Civilization? Well, after the jungle of London. Yes, it is. How do you find it? Westdale revisited by Charlotte Sidney. Dull? Boring? Provincial? Mm, not at all. Gay? Exciting? The town is. I don't know about the county, the old social round. Well, I think you ought to liven it up a bit, don't you? I'll try. Yes, well, don't try too hard, will you? Uh, they're still very conventional, you know. Then beware. You don't want to grow old and stuffy like the rest of them around here. <laughs> you know, you're talking exactly like somebody I met this afternoon. He called me a fossil. You're slowly fossilising, he said. Not you, Jay. As a matter of fact, I think you know him. Who? Mark Foster. May I? Ah, yes. Yes, you
You do know him, don't you? Mark Foster? Why? What makes you think... Because I was at the airport. I saw you both. I was there. Oh, I see. Well, then, yes, I do. Yes, yes. Why did you lie to your father? He doesn't like me flying. <laughs> well, I hope you both know what you're doing. I'm quite old enough to take care of myself, thank you. Good. Anyway, I hardly know him. Hardly? He's amusing. I like him. Well, I hardly think you've got very much in common. I really don't care what you think, James. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? Anyway, you're a fine one to talk. From what I gather, most people round here are saying Susan isn't exactly your type. Well, that makes two of us then, doesn't it? At least Mark's go ahead. He's bursting with ideas and enterprise. Which is more than can be said for most I of agree, the people I agree, I agree. I've got nothing against him. What a pity. For a few delicious moments, I thought I detected a note of jealousy. Well, I'm very sorry to disappoint. Shall we drop the subject? No, no, the young man interests me. Look, if you simply ask me to cross-examine me, I'm going. You know that he's bought Thorpe House, don't you? Yes, I do. You didn't try and stop him? It's a free country. Mark got his offering first. The fact that your father wanted it, that didn't worry? Of course it worried me, and I'm sorry. But Mark wanted it just as badly. What's he going to use it for, do you know? You mean, what are we going to use it for? Oh, I see, yes. Yes, I wondered where you got the money from. Well, now you know. And I suppose you'll see it's all round Westdale by tomorrow. No, I won't. I promise. I like him. I really do. I admire your taste. Do you? Yes. I think we'll make quite a good partnership. But I don't want anyone to know that I'm involved. No, please. you just want to be a sleeping partner, is that it? Yes. <laughs> I suppose I do. The point is, my father might find out. And you might do No, I won't. I promise you I won't. And in return, perhaps you'll tell me what he's going to use it for. All right, then. I will. He's opening a casino. It's true. The licence was granted last week. Don't ask me how he got it. Mark's right to go to And you're putting up all the money, are you? Most of it. Yes. But you know me with money. I'm hopeless. Yes. Well, if you, um, if you wanted any advice... No, no. Mark's looking after the business side. Thanks, all the same. Yes? You're in here. Susan, you don't know Charlotte Sidney, do you? Charlotte, this is Susan. <laughs> Hello. I've heard so much about you. What have you been saying? Oh, nice things. He's a nice man. You're very lucky. No, no, I'm lucky. She's just mad. Would you have a drink? Actually, I'm starving. I didn't get any lunch today. And I've stayed far too long already. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. It was just that... Oh, please, don't go. <laughs> no, no. We must meet up again sometime. Yes. Bye. I'll see you up. Goodbye. Hey. She's nice, isn't she? I think I will have a drink. Oh, yes, sorry, uh, uh, Sherry. Uh, had a hectic day, have you? Somewhat. How long had she been here? Just a few minutes. Did you know she was coming? No, no, she just dropped in. Dressed like that? I think she still fancies you. I know that, Luke. No, no, no. That was over a long time ago. We're just friends. We are just good friends, said James Hadley. Young Lando, now press chief and company director at his country seat over the weekend. You've been reading too many newspapers. I've been writing for too many. I wonder what you'd say about me after ten years. Sorry, what I'd say about what? If I went away and came back ten years later. I'd say that I was mad to let you go in the first place. I just wondered. The Charlottes of this world always make me feel such a peasant. I don't know, I always seem to put my foot in it somehow. I mean, coming in like that and saying I was famished, she must have thought I wanted to get rid of her. But I didn't, honestly. You were hungry and you said so. Now, what's wrong with that? You should have asked her to stay to dinner or something and sent me away. After all, I'm not your wife yet. Go on doing that. I shall be interfered. Yes, well, 
That's the way I like my peasants to feel, don't you know? Mm. Got Maxwell after that? No. He's gone down to the village. Four oh one. Still no joy in our mystery buyer, thought I'd just let you know. You broken the new CEO boy yet? Yes, yes, I broke it this afternoon. He didn't take it too well, I'm afraid. Look, I've just had an idea. Instead of you putting somebody onto that story, I think I'll get Susan to follow it up. She's here with me now. Well, at least we can get a quote from Sir Edward, even if we get nothing else. Yes, look, I'll give her all the background, and then she'll report to you about midday tomorrow. Is that all right? Yes, yeah, fine. Oh, how's Miss Winkle? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I do hope she turns up sometime. Who's oh, Miss Winkle? Oh, don't worry about that. I've, uh, I've got a job for you. I'd like you, if you can, to find out who's bought Thorpe House. Well, have you any ideas? Uh, no. No, none at all, I'm afraid. Now, while you're doing that, I've got to go to London for the day just to see someone. It'd better not be some bird stashed away in a muse in Bayswater. Is it a bird? Yes. Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. It's an old vulture stashed away in the city. Ah, bien. Bon, monsieur le Gorge. Alors, la différence sera 1800 000 francs, pas? Oui. Je préviendrai les notaires. Oui, c'est ça. Oui, entrez. Come in. Hey, oh, pardon, monsieur, je parlais à quelqu'un de le bureau. Vous allez me téléphoner demain, n'est-ce pas? Au revoir, monsieur. Au revoir. They agreed to the deal in, uh, in Paris. Your 11.30 appointment, Lord Southcote, Mr. Hadley. Oh, yes. Uh, good. Uh, has Zurich come through yet? Yes, yes, sir. Ah, thank you. I'll see Mr. Hadley now. What are these? The first reactions to the counteroffer. It seems to have taken them by surprise. They're issuing a statement midday. Oh, I shall be interested to see what they can find to say about it. Hello, Willie. Yeah. Nice of you to see me. Oh, not at all. Take a seat. Yes, I won't keep you long. Yeah. I hear you're in the middle of another takeover. Yes, well, we haven't quite got down to it yet. With a piece of luck, we might uh, pull it off, I think, if we've done our sums correctly. You really enjoy it, don't you, sitting up here manipulating the international money bags? Well, I can think of uh, easier ways of turning an honest penny. Yours is the life, dear boy. No worries, no deadlines, no panics. I hear you've even given up... Uh, Running that local rag of yours. It's a bit early, eh? Life to do nothing. Well, it's one of the reasons I wanted to see you. My business affairs. Well, my advice to you is do nothing. You've got a good broker, haven't you? Yes. Well, let him do the worrying. Well, that's the trouble, you see. All my money's tied up. Gilt edged blue chips. And a few hundred acres of Yorkshire, that's not trouble. Or if it is, I've been worrying about the wrong thing. Willie, I want to raise some cash. Yes. Well, why don't you get your banker to loan it to you? Well, I don't think they're going to play ball somehow. Oh. Well, if it's uh, any good, we might be interested. Uh, depends on the yield and the risk element. But if it's uh, a gamble, I'm not your man. Well, there's no gamble involved. I just want to buy a casino. <laughs> Oh, you gave me a fright. Well, did you do whatever it was you had to do in London? Yes, yes. It took a bit longer than I thought. I suppose you popped into your club as well? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. Nobody there I knew that. Oh, dear. I am sorry. Nobody to take money off at backgammon. What's the matter with you? Nothing. I've just been chasing around Westdale, that's all. Whatever for? You see, you've forgotten. I knew you would. Forgotten what? I thought you were interested in a story you asked me to follow up. Oh, you mean the one about Foster? Who told you it was, you it was Foster? Nobody did. Then how do you know? How do I know? Well, it says so down there, doesn't it? Yes, there you are. Mark Foster. Why didn't you say so? What's the matter, love? 
I could ask you the same question. Meaning? Oh, nothing. How did you find out about Mark Foster? I have my sources. Anybody I know? Oh, dear, you are being secretive, aren't you? I also found out how much he had to pay for Thorpe House. I don't think he could have afforded it by himself. I think he's got other backers. Have you any idea who they might be? Not at the moment. He wouldn't talk. Then I went to see Sir Edward and had a long chat with him. He says you put Mark Foster on that list for the fundraising dinner he gave. Yes, yes sir. Well, I think he's behaved disgustingly. Going along and hearing all the old boys' plans and then sneaking off and buying the house for something else. It's downright dirty. If you read this, you'll see the anger I'm taking. It might make Mr. Foster think twice. That is, if he's got a conscience, which I rather doubt. I say you do feel strongly about it, don't you? Well, it's about time somebody did. Poor Sir Edward's been left terribly in the lurch. No, that's not true. Oh, isn't it? No. Uh, I wouldn't send this in just yet, if I were you. Why, ever not. Well, you Frank, asked me to fight... Well, it. But it's the truth. No. no, there's not enough here to make a story. No, if I were you, I'd leave it um, till you find out what they're going to use it for. You have always said the editor runs the paper without interference from anybody. Doesn't that include you? Especially now you're I'm no longer... I'm only saying what I think you should do. Now, you must do what you like. Thank you very much. I will. I shall go and see him right now. We're going to eat together later. Shall we? That's most unlikely. Your girlfriend telephoned earlier. I quite forgot to tell you. Uh, she asked me over for a drink. She was very sweet. She asked me how I was and said how nice it had been to meet me and deliberately neglected to invite me over as well. Yes, well, she obviously assumed you'd take the invitation as being meant for you as well. Well, she can just stop assuming. If she thinks she can calmly bring me up and ask you over for a drink, she's got another thing coming. Oh, darling, you... Oh, don't darling me! You really want to know I think she's got a bloody cheek and you can tell her that from me! James, I'm angry with you. It's obviously not my day for being loved. Your Susan was round here this morning and interviewed my father for the Gazette. Somehow she's found out about my, Mark buying Thorpe House. Did you tell her? No. No, I didn't. Did you think I could have a drink? You could have stopped the whole thing. And why Susan? She's worked farther up into a high old state. I had a job to prevent her from rushing over to see Mark and accusing him of treachery. You must use your influence to get the story quashed. If you don't. It'll land me in a hell of a mess. Well, the truth's bound to come out, you know, about you and Mark. You must have known that when you went into partnership with him. I wasn't thinking about anything. Only Mark. I know it sounds stupid. But you need him? Yes, I do. I know his background's different. And I know exactly what people around here are going to say, but I don't care. Look at you and Susan. It's the same, only the other way round. That's working out, isn't it? Well, yes, it was, until you telephoned this evening. Oh, I know. She's upset because I didn't ask her to. Oh. But how could I? When I heard from Mark she'd been round to see him as well, I, I didn't know what to do. You can stop the story, can't well, you? She's I'll already written it, you see. She's on her way to see the editor now. Oh, God. If father finds out I'm backing Mark, he'll have a heart attack. Then he mustn't find out, must he? I know, but I can't just pull out now. I've already paid some money for the deposit on the house. I promised the estate agents they could have the full amount tomorrow. Oh. I can't just call Mark and tell him I've changed my mind. James, oh, James, what am I going to do? Well, I don't see any simple way out of this, my dear. Unless, of course, you can find... Someone willing to put up the money. You, you mean find someone else willing to go in with Mark instead of me? Mark wouldn't just go in with anyone. He likes to control things. Well, would he go in with me? If I could find the money, that is. You're joking. No, I'm not. I'm absolutely serious. But, but, but you don't even know him. You only saw him at the well, airport. That's all we met in this room, didn't he tell you? I think Mark and I might get on rather well. But what about my father? You promised to find him some backers for the arts and he'd never forgive you. Well, it's a risk I shall have to take, isn't it? James, are you being serious? Oh, yes. Yes, I am. Absolutely serious. Well, I'll call Mark and see if he agrees. Uh, no. 
No, it's up to you to decide. What if he objects? Well, if he objects, he will. Once he finds out. I'm afraid, my darling, you've got to make this decision by yourself. Now, you think it over and give me a ring, will you? All right? Yeah. <clears throat> Sounds good. Oh, uh, show them in, will you, David? And will you ask Miss Flanders to be so good as to take my calls? Hmm. Yes. Ah, Charlotte, yes. this is Lord Southcote. Charlotte oh, Sidney. How do you do? Hello. Yes, do sit down, won't you? Mm. We had a good uh, flight. Yes, thank you. We had the plane to ourselves. Yes. Would you, uh, would you like a cigarette? Mm. Yes. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> light. Well, uh, uh, James, you've uh, made up your mind? Yes, yes, I have. Yes, oh, very well. I have all the papers here for your two signatures. Please sign twice on the first page and once on the second page. The places have been marked in pencil. Yes, the first document is simply a renunciation of any assets you may hold uh, now or at any future time in the property known as... Uh, as Thorpe House. Uh, uh, Th Thorpe House. And also of any enterprise that may be uh, carried on there at some future date uh, during the ownership of Mr. Hadley. Hmm. But the house won't belong to Mr. Hadley. It's been bought by Mr. Foster. I understand that Mr. Foster has simply paid a deposit uh, with your money and that the balance uh, has to be uh, sent in by today in order for completion to take place. But the house will still be Mr. Foster's, won't it? Oh, no, the property will belong to Mr. Hadley. When you sign uh, that paper, you're freed of any kind of responsibility. And when you find out, sign on the second page, you uh, those responsibilities will rest on Mr. Hadley's. Yes, don't make them sound too heavy. Well, yes. I've warned you against it. Yes, you've made it all too clear. Come along, Charlotte, sign. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. That's right, all done. There you are. Thank you. This is Mr. Hadley's cheque made in your favour for the sum already paid by you as deposit on the house. Yes. Mr. Hadley's solicitors will now forward the full purchase price to the solicitors of the, the vendors and the title and deeds will then be transferred to his name. I hope I've done the right thing. Oh, I'm sure you have, my dear, as far as you're concerned. Yes, <laughs> well, I suppose so. Thank yes, you. Yes. Goodbye, Lord Southcote. Yes, goodbye. Well done, Willie. Well done. You handled that very nicely. Yes, she won't like you one little bit when you scrap this casino business. She trusts me, Willie. She trusts me. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I want to see Mr. Foster and the boy on the door. Or was it a girl? I'm not absolutely certain. Anyway, they said he was a little... Do it again. Just you read nice and quiet. Mr. Foster won't see you. As a matter of fact, I think he will. Now, come on. Would you just uh, show him that paper? Say it. All right, then. This bit of paper isn't worth anything. Well, that depends, really, doesn't it? You've got no right interfering in my business plans. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't think you've got any business plans, Mr. Foster. Haven't I? Well, this is Charlotte Sidney's under the lot over to you. She can't do it. Well, not against her will, she can't. Well, have you in court for trying this? Only don't scare me, Hadley. Now, take this and get out. All right, but she can, you know. 
And she has. And you must have forced her to do it. She told me you'd seen us at the airport. Yes, that's true. And she signed under duress. No, no, she didn't. Here you are. You can ask her yourself. You bastard. All right, Hadley. I'm not going to fight you over a bit of property. There's plenty more. We all lot always stick together, don't we? I thought Charlotte was different. You take Thorpe House, maiden. Do what you want with it. Turn it into a mental home for ex-debs. No, I can't do that. The place is still yours, if you want it. Right. Yes, on one condition. That you make me a majority shareholder in the casino. You do that, and you can have all the money you want on the same terms as you agreed with Charlotte Sidney. Straight up. Straight up. I think a casino here in West Hill is going to make a lot of money for both of us, don't you? Well, you wanted a flipping art centre. Yes, well, that can take care of itself. Well, you haven't given me an answer. get it. I can't make you out. Everyone in Westdale is shocked and horrified for you, of all people, to go into the gambling racket with Foster, an upstart little gangster. He's not a gangster. He's a perfectly honest businessman. He's quick as a mark and he's straight as a die. Yeah, so. Look, you deliberately used the Gazette to further your own ends. You didn't want the news of this deal out until you'd finished your job. How's Miss Winkle? <clears throat> you made a fool out of me and everybody in Westdale. Heads. Sorry. I've tried to make excuses for your conduct, James, but I simply can't. Viewed from any standpoint, your behaviour's been quite disgraceful. I've told Charlotte that in future it'd be better if we didn't meet. That's all I've got to say. Yes, yes, you've made yourself perfectly clear, Sir Edward, and I'm sorry too. Good. Well, that was Sir Edward breaking off diplomatic relations. You've really done it this time, haven't you, James? But why? Why? Why what? Why buy into a casino? Well, to make money, of course. What better reason could there be? C'est trop. C'est trop. <laughs> well, you can lose your shirt in Brigitte now, you know. There's plenty of cash here. I see. And it's piling on chips like a lunatic. That's another 200 on red. Keep your fingers crossed, Lou. If it comes up again, I'll get you a new rose, and that's a promise. Oh, love, make it 300. <laughs> we'll show them. Giving her your telephone number, Jack? No, checking up on her measurements. <laughs> I might fancy fitting her up with some nice lingerie. <laughs> you better keep your mind on your roulette, or you won't have any lingerie left to fit her up with. <laughs> I'll have to fit her up with nothing, won't I? You'd not mind fit it up with nothing, wouldn't you, love? Oh, who's that fella trying to get off for the week? Jack Croucher, rag trade. One of the men we tried to get to put up some money for the art centre. Oh, wouldn't he? No, not a penny, said we. We might use the place for orgies. May I introduce my manager, Mr. Foster, Lord How do you do? How's it going? Couldn't be better. Last week was a record. Oh. Membership up to 300, still climbing. Well, you will excuse me just for yes. a minute, won't you? You seem to be onto a gold mine, James. Thanks to your generous loan, I think we are. Well, obtained under slightly false pretenses, if I may say so. Are you expecting some other guests? Yes, yes, I am. As a matter of fact, here they are. Oh. I promised. I Charlotte talked me into it. Very much, sir, Edward. It's very kind of you. Charlotte, you look lovely. You don't know Lord Southcote, do you? Oh, how do you do? What a very charming... Hello, day. Willie. Please, have a drink, will you, if you'd excuse you me just now. I'll have it. I understand there's to be some announcement of public importance. Yes, so they tell me, and a presentation, I believe. What's he up to? Excuse me a moment while oh, I go and talk to someone. Must you on? Well, All right, Mark, you're on. I'll wait in the wings. Go on. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? Your attention, please. What's happening? Please. <laughs> Wait and see. Thank you very much. Thank you. My lord, ladies and gentlemen, quite a few of you here tonight were invited not long ago to a meeting at Sir Edward Sidney's house.
with the idea of raising the cash for an art centre for the youth of Westley. Well, the money wasn't raised because nobody was interested. I know I wasn't. No, seriously, I wasn't. Anyway, some of you may know that the building we're sitting in tonight was originally earmarked for the site. Only I bought it first. And I'm very glad I did. Because, you see, this casino is doing very well and making a good profit. Which brings me to the point of what I want to say. Last week, at a meeting of Thorpe Properties, that's the company that runs this place, my financial backer, Mr. James Hadley, who most of you know, and I, well, we came to a decision. We decided to give Westdale an art centre for its youth, where they can study painting and sculpture, listen to music and poetry, and enrich their lives. So, we've decided to take out an option on a site in the corner of Market Street, behind the Civic Theatre. We've also had a model made by our distinguished borough architect, Mr Langton, and as from next week, a substantial proportion of the profits from this casino will be paid each week into a trust fund for the Art Centre. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I now have great pleasure in handing over the option document made out in the name of the Art Centre Trust to Sir Edward Sidney, the chairman, together with a model of the centre itself. Thank you very much. Because, my love, women can't keep secrets. What was that you said about women? Oh, my dear Charlotte. Whoever put woman on the drawing board never designed her to be trusted. Very sure. No. That French building fellow. Could, yes. could be see. That's the fellow. No, That's not him. James Hadley. How did you do this? <laughs> oh, get out. Get out. <laughs> I hope you have every... Ah. <laughs> 